Hey, how's it going? Yes, I'm 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 working on 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 this again. Um, I I love this animation. It's 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 by far one of my favorites, honestly, of all time. And that might seem crazy to you, and that's that's okay. That's all right. You know. Um, I love how much work went into this animation. There is so much stuff that people take for granted as far as stuff that goes by really quickly in a movie or a program or uh, like some, something I loved looking at, I loved looking at was this, there is a, a special box set edition of Blade Runner and they showed you, you, you could look at uh, the, uh, uh, what do you call that, the concept art you, you could look at all the concept art for uh for that that they that they were able to get anyway a hold of still and they showed all of that they they showed so much stuff behind the scenes of, of the filming of of that movie and they pointed out so many really interesting things like uh there's this point in the movie where um they're in that big building and they're, and you, they're kind of looking down and you you hear all these these strange sounds that you basically you you know you're 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 not living in this particular time but uh, they have all these lights that are kind of swinging and they described how that was a method of being able to see the vastness of the place because of uh, it it get the lights swinging and the way that the lights affect the area around it is what gives that building its sense of depth. It's what kind of defined its sense of depth. Otherwise, you had no idea its sense of depth. And so there's all these little little things that they, they talked about. And, and, and I found that so fascinating. I, 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 I loved that. I, I, there was like a there was like a whole month, man, where I, I kind of lived, breathed, lived and breathed uh, Blade Runner. It, it was just, I, I was just completely OCDing on it, and it, and it, and yeah, it, but it was a good OCDing on it, and uh, so there are so many things that I've that I've been fascinated with. I have been fascinated with this animation here. I mean, since I ever first saw it, and I thought it was something that was done with computers. I had assumed it was done with computers, but uh, I, I don't think so. Um, this this stuff looks hand drawn. It's like it might have been originally done with, it could even have been done with pencils, but then there's something that could be computer that allowed them to have this, to to give this look that's similar to um, uh, 2001 uh, A Space Odyssey when uh, during the, that uh, dream sequence, the, uh, 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 the fourth dimensional sequence. Uh, it's when he became fourth di four dimensional or however you want to, look at how that ending was and uh, so I kind of wonder whether they might have done something like that what is it a slit scan camera is that what it's called anyway and it's interesting because it, this looks consistent up to this point and then right after this they start to bring in an, another set of animations so it's it's like well, they started on something and decided, well, that's going on for too long. Uh, we need to uh, we need to start to quicken this up because they want it to go. They want to see the ABC Monday Night Movie quit sooner. So they started mixing in another animation here, right? Because these, uh, I mean, you can see the simplicity of it, and you can see the colors of it. It's it's, it's you know just reds and blues. You get to hear. And the stuff they start to mix in is kind of a, a magenta and aqua. And it's it's interesting to note some of the things here. Like right here, you got this this star, and the next frame, it, that's in the same place as that star, virtually the same place as that star. You can see the bottom part of it is, you know, it, it, it was based on the same thing, but they, they kind of stretch it or... or, or 
they they uh, use some sort of brush and and I, I don't know exactly what they did because then you go to some of these next frames it goes white and now it goes that pink color goes with the magenta hi magenta and uh, you know, I just I just find it very fascinating because again I thought you know I used to think that this was done with computers um. I would kind of associate this with Tron. Now, the thing that I didn't find out about Tron until later on is that uh, Tron, the main, the only thing that, that was really done by computers were the wireframes. Everything else, they had to paint in those wireframes by hand. That's what gave Tron some of its look that it had. So maybe this is similar. Maybe there's, maybe... Uh, no, that wouldn't make sense either. I don't know. I don't know how they did this, and it's always fascinated me. And I know a lot of work went into this. So, now the reason for my trying to remaster this is because it was not in 30 frames a second. I don't know exactly which it was, it's either 24 or 25 frames a second. If it's 25, then this sequence could have been made in Europe, which would be interesting if it was. But uh, let, me, let me show you the problem here. Let me, let me scoot forward here. Okay. So 60 frames a second on, on TV, it's not, they're not true frames because they're kind of half frames. So you got, you know, you go do lines 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, etc. And then you go lines 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, etc. And to get the entire resolution, you have to see all the sets of the lines. Well, they can also make it so it, you know, you have each half frame is actually a full frame. And, uh, but when something is not originally in 30 and you've converted it to 30 this is what ends up happening okay so we're gonna I'm gonna assume uh, the first frame that it would be converted. we'll just say odd a odd frame okay so we've got odd even odd even but now even or whatever you, you've got some other frame here and you don't know you know what what is that frame well, it's just an extra leftover because you can't, you know, perfectly convert 24 or 25 to 30 or to even 60. So it's, it's going to be off. So now it looks better in 60 than it does 30. And so, but one of the things you'll notice here is down here in the bottom, look at this stair step, but it, you can watch that it looks like it would be filled in if you know, if you could see both of those. So what I'll do is I'll take, see here, here it looks all filled in. So I'll take one of these frames. I'm gonna assume that, well, let's, let's look. Let's first look to see whether or not, okay, so, so that's a new frame. So I should be able to take this one, stack it on top and make it 50% uh, percent opacity. Look at that. Voila. Look how nice that looks now. As if I, ever, if I go, if I make it go down to zero or I make it go to uh, 100, you can see how bad it looks. But the more you get closer to 50, the better it looks. So 50% on the opacity. And now we've got this nice looking full frame. Has a very, very nice look to it. And yet it still has the, the resolution advantage of the way that this signal was was sort of up converted so um, I just keep on doing that of course in this case this is a frame an extra frame and I could put this on top here and say 25% uh, but usually it, it doesn't really help much but let's look let's look at the difference between uh, here it's at 25% let's go zero and of course, 100 look is going to look terrible. But is there any point that this makes this look better? No, it doesn't. It doesn't help. So 
generally I don't do that frame. So I keep just and take these now, stack these, put the one on top as 50%. And this way, it doesn't matter whether or not um, it was... See, see, the problem with when you capture this at 30 frames per second is sometimes you'll get a skipped frame. I'll show you an example of one right here. This was a skipped frame. There was only one half frame to represent this frame. And because it looks kind of crappy, I went through and changed the blurry. I, put, I added some Gaussian blur to it and made it 3.5. Look what happens when I go zero. You know, that's... Especially when you zoom into this a little bit here. Let's let's go to let's go 100% here. Okay, that's got some some nasty you know stair steps. That's got some you know. You look here, it looks nice and smooth. You go forward, that looks nasty. So I put a 3.5 blur on that frame, and there we go. We've got uh, you know that's passable, particularly since it's only one frame, but it's not going to stand out like it would otherwise. And some of those things that give it that. NTSC look, and I'm trying to get rid of that. Another thing is I've add, I've created uh, this dit image here. Now you can see how much clearer that. Let's, let's go back to uh, uh, fit again. All right. You can see, be, see a big difference between that and that. That has some nice clarity to it. Still got some things to work on on it. I, I'm going to try to make some of the background of that a little bit darker. More more shit to do on that. But then I, I after I, I export these after I'm done I'm going to export it as images individual images there's like 200 and something frames to this animation which isn't very many but uh, and then I go into Adobe Illustrator and I'll uh, I'll take one of these here and click on this and then say uh, high fidelity photo for the uh, uh, image trace do 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 and it'll take a little bit here several uh, uh, processes that it has to do and it's the last one something about a curve yeah path smoothing and then it's the one after that that's the last one and here we go a curve fitting yes and and so then it looks like this. That's something to take note of. Uh, uh, even though this this image here was from when I hadn't been combining the frames to get rid of the stair steps, um, you can see some of the stair steps right here. But even when I've done just this process, you can see that it gets rid of a lot of that look. And then I'll make that even more extreme by saying rasterize, at least on these frames, until you see uh, ABC Sunday uh, um, or Monday night movie in this case. So I go, I go rasterize, say anti-aliasing none, and as you see, it totally got rid of that that look that's on any of this, you know. And it looks crisp, and uh, I think that does this animation justice. I'm trying to to remaster this to be. Uh, 1080p. I would love to get the whole animation, the whole the, the longer version. I'd love to find a video cassette with that on it, because and then at least I'll have all the frames. Because nobody else seems to be uh, nobody else seems to be capturing things in 60 frames per second. So this really can't be done unless properly anyway, unless unless it's captured that way. Because it, it, there will be some frames that are just that are, do not line up. So. And so it'll continue to go between uh, seeing only, you know, a half frames worth of of data, and then suddenly it's you got full frames, and then half frames, and full frames, and hey, it looks bad. So anyway, uh, so that's what I've been doing there. I mean, if you want to see how um, how how this is when I stopped doing this I got to 78 frames in and, and and it was looking and I was seeing this see these horrible stair steps yeah that that looks bad and even if I uh, even if I 
trace this image here, high fidelity photo. Even when I do this, you can still see the stair steps there. Um, not as bad, but you can see them. So, or at least I don't remember it as being as bad, but we'll know in a moment. You know, I saw that and was like, wait, wait, I've got to redo this whole thing. So. See? I mean, you don't notice it as what it really is as much, but that looks bad. That just, nope, that's not going to pass. Um... And when it is done this way, and I, I, I rasterize this, that has a neat look to it. And, I, and I'm looking forward to seeing how this looks um, when all of the resolution is there. Because if so, I might leave it like this and, and keep it looking kind of uh, uh, more animated, you know? Because this does make it look more animated. Now here, I don't know if you can see that or not, but there's a... Uh, there's a problem here. You see this issue here. Now, what I'll probably end up having to do if I if I keep it this way, now I can go back and keep it like this. And this works too, but it you you can see the, the these these layers of color, right? And the way I'm going to try to cover that up is to match it with the original video footage and there are some effects that I can do, some blending effects that I can do that will uh, that should get rid of this look but still keep the crispness, merry crispness of everything else. So that's what I'm working on. Um, I mean I suppose I could do it for 4k but I, I, I don't see a point not 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 on something like this that, that's that's trying to take it a little too far to me. But I could if I wanted to. So anyway, um, that's what I've been working on, and it it's it, it's again it may seem very strange to people that I that I'm focusing on this so much, but there's just so much there's so much art all over the place, so much beautiful art, so much art in video games, so much art in movies, so much art on just a commercial so much so much ingenuity so much creativity so much peop so many people putting a lot of effort into creating something that's cool you know and i've got to give people credit for that i i like to put that up on display because it's worth putting up on display anyway <laughs> 